Yo, 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 what's up, people? It's your boy P. Ross in the building, and we got Miss LC in the building. What's up, girl? Hello. Ain't no need to introduce these two other Negroes. We good. Um, Nah, then we got CMS in the building, and the homie Lenny B. L. Boogie. What's up, fellas? Hey, hey what's up? What's up? What's up? <laughs> What's good? Hey. Night four. Night four celebration. That's what's up. Night four yeah. celebration. Let's go. Let's get into Saturday, it. Saturday night. Saturday night. Let's get into it. Last night. Yeah, so so uh mm. Saturday, April twenty fourth, uh, which was uh a very uh bittersweet, you know, day, because you know that is the the day of uh, Prince's, uh, I, I want to say death, but his uh, transition. Transition. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that day started off. We had to get up a little bit early, earlier than the the two previous days to head over to Paisley mm -hmm. for the uh, celebration, and um, it was very emotional. Yes. Very emotional. Yes. And also, it was National Record Store Day. Mm, yes, sir. Okay. So, um, so yeah, so we had over to Paisley, over on the the shuttle, and uh, along with the other uh, Purple family. And um, I'm trying to remember what was the first thing that we did that day. I, I'm trying to remember if there was a panel first. Or not? Wasn't it the uh, the uh, horn play? I think that was the uh, was that the dance panel then? No, 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 no. That was no. the last. Okay. Um. But I we did do our tour that day. Yeah, we did our tour that day. I don't know whether we did a panel on the main stage or no I think that was the um, uh, the photograph the uh, photographer uh, oh yeah with Steve Park Park and, uh, Steve Park and them and Alan, yeah uh, Steve Park and them in the love for one another room yeah okay was that it yep we have no idea. <laughs> uh, okay. that, that, you, know what? you know what? He's right. Yeah, it was. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because it was, uh, yeah, like you said, Steve Park and um, Alan, um, uh, his last name escapes me. Starts with a B. Yeah, but uh, he was uh, one of the Prince's uh, earliest um, uh, photographers. He uh, also has a new book. Coming out later on this year. Yeah, I'm definitely going to add that to the collection because those yeah, photos that he showed, oh man, <laughs> were off the chain. He did the famous watercolor photos, the poster that you got me. Yes. That I love. Yeah. Yeah. With the neon. But see, like, <laughs> I had thought that she was was going to enjoy that panel because you know she it loves is. she loves taking photos, so. So I thought it was cool, and, and Steve Park, he's always a uh, uh, very enjoyable, you know, to you know, hear his stories. What was what was interesting about that panel, though, was uh, just what the the first guy had to go through in order to get the picks right, like having yeah. to actually put together a stage and neon and this and that. Mattress springs, right? The background for um. With a dirty mind out. Yeah. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. And he made the neon lights himself, like the neon for all those photos. Right. Like, yeah. who does that? What photographer knows how to make neon lights? Right. 
But compared to Steve Park, you ain't even got to go through that now. You can take a picture on a on a blank background and just add what you want. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? You know, so. Photoshop it in. Yeah. Yes, it is. But you, uh, one thing I thought was very interesting was, uh, I think somebody had asked a question, um, but it was something about, you know, did Prince actually practice, like, his poses and, and things like that because he, he never took a bad photo so it just it just makes you think that he was so in tune with every aspect of what was going around uh going around with him so yeah it was yeah so uh i guess uh i think after that was what the tour, I think. Yeah, I yeah. guess so. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Which that was really cool. We didn't get to see that much though. Yeah. I feel like we kind of got our was kind of rushed, and there was a lot that we didn't get to see, but mm -hmm. it was still like we got to see his office and some of like the rooms, which was pretty cool. And just to see like his outfits, like how small they were. And of course, like the purple rain room was my favorite. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, that was really awesome. But it was a very emotional day. Like everybody was very, very emotional. And you could just feel it in the air and mm -hmm. you know. But Yeah, I met when uh part where our uh, tour guide where we were standing in the uh, atrium. Yeah, the uh, atrium and you know she was like where his uh his ashes were and once uh you know, she was talking to us but she got so emotional and she told us that she's done this tour so many times but you know she understood you know what that day meant to a lot of people including her so so once she started getting emotional you know I had to sort of Walk off to the side a little bit. And, uh, so yeah, man, that was that was that was pretty heavy uh, moment. But uh, but yeah, those rooms were real cool. Like like you said, the the purple rain room, uh, the love sexy room, the under yeah. the cherry moon, sign of the times, down in the pearls. But you know, it went so quick you couldn't really take it all in. Yeah. <laughs> But it was great. Yeah. I can't wait to go on a real tour, like yeah. the big tour that's like hours, and you know you get to touch mm -hmm. stuff and yeah. Exactly. That. Mm -hmm. um, and then I can't remember um, what concert did they show that day. Was it more mm -hmm. piano stuff, or was it Third Eye Girl? No, I think it was Third Eye Girl. Was it? That was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Concert, P. Ross. Was it Third Eye Girl? Yeah, I think it was Third Eye Girl because they was done with the piano microphone stuff like first couple days. So yeah. we actually only saw two concerts on the big screen, right? Well, we 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 actually get to see the um uh how many shows because you. The Prince Live, the, the Prince Live. I think um, I don't know if we saw a concert that day or not. You I know, know. we were only we leave for like two hours. So uh, you know, um, I do remember the the, the Third Eye Girl um, uh, concert. You know, yeah. Montreal. I think that's what you said. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Saturday. Yeah. And then. Um, you know, after that we did, of course, the food. You know, food break, all that kind of stuff. Dinner break or whatever. Yeah, mac and cheese was on point. I like the mac and cheese; it was good. And those yeah. cookies. Yeah. Or that lemon oh, cake yeah. stuff or whatever. I don't know. That was good. Oh yeah. They need to improve the food, though. I will say, like, it was all right. 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 We done a little better. I think the food should be. Should be added along with the uh, 
the pricing of the whole <laughs> right. Starbucks. Right. You shouldn't have to pay an extra hundred dollars for food. <laughs> but, whatever. I think that should go along with it. True um, that. We'll see how they do it mm -hmm. next year. Well, I'm sure. Yeah. And then, the, and then the uh, the live entertainment. Yeah. Y'all know what it is. The funk soldiers. The oh, funk they soldiers, did that. baby. They did that. Yeah. yeah. They, they, the they funk came soldiers, to, baby. They came to play. Yeah. It's not playing. <laughs> if you know what I mean. So the, so the band consisted of uh, basically uh, pretty much pretty much the same uh, band that was that did the uh, the Prince live at Target right mm -hmm. you know you had Kip uh, sharing yeah. vocals with right. Shelby J mm -hmm. um, the horns <laughs> man I love the horns man Adrian Crutchfield and all them brothers uh, <laughs> They add a yeah. They add an extra z zest to the to the to the uh to to the stage presence of the group. And like you said, Cat Dyson loved. I was I loved to see her. You know, she was on one of the panels too. But uh, Cat Dyson is is um saw on the Jam of the Year tour uh with uh with Rhonda Smith back in the day and mm -hmm. uh. I loved it then. I love her now. She's she, she's off the chain. She's off the chain. Yeah. Love her energy, you know. Um, so yeah, who was the who was playing? Who was who was who was playing? Uh, yeah, we had Kirky J on the drums. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of who who was the bass player. Uh, I, I can't remember the bass player. What I'm trying to think was it. Uh, I don't know, because I, I was so just into the into the uh, the songs they were playing. Right. Uh, this group here, because I think Cassandra, I think Cassandra was playing keyboards. Yep. Yeah. She was. Cassandra's playing keyboards. And damn, I can't get the bass player. I don't know why I can't remember who the bass player was. Right. Um, but um. But anyway, they were uh, they were tight, just like they was at the Target Center. Mm -hmm. And the songs, their song selection, mm -hmm. is really what turned everything up a notch into a whole nother level. Right. So that effect, what was y'all's favorite uh, song that they sang, man? Um, for me, I think my favorite was when they mixed "Lady Cab Driver." And irresistible bitch. That was yeah, that's yeah. Why it yeah. Kind of stands out for me, but I, mm -hmm. I agree with you, El Boogie. The song selection was was on point. Um, they 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 Didn't also they managed do something to from the Rainbow Children. Yeah, yeah. One plus one yeah. plus one is three. They did that and uh, the work. Part okay, one. yeah. One plus yeah, that was hot. One plus one plus one is three. Yeah, but. Uh, but they did manage to squeeze uh, a couple of uh, hits in there, you know. But uh, but for the most part, it was the more obscure, the more hidden gems that you know the hardcore fans really love. And All the critics shit. love you in New York. Yeah, right. And uh, they started off with a, a instrumental song, a uh, jam of "I'm Yours." <laughs> oh my God! Right, right. Mm -hmm. Killer. And then um I think what else they did, uh oh and then we have to <laughs> acknowledge another highlight. The dance talk. The dance off. The black sweat. The black sweat. <laughs> that now, was my oh yeah. Now, <laughs> now I can't remember what song they were playing. But we was all standing up jam. And then next thing you know, I see one of, the, one of the members of the Purple Underground, El Boogie, just oh, goes. I'm like, where did he go? I didn't even know that he left. I didn't know, and I'm like, I see him dancing. On, I'm like, how did he get on stage? I thought he was making a break for the bathroom. That's what it looked like. And I had no oh. like, where the hell he going? What happened? Next thing you know, he on stage, boy, getting it. 
Getting it. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, you know, they was looking for dancers, uh, a male and a female. And, you know, I know my boy Julius, you know what I'm saying, work security there. Probably, you know, he seen me there, you know, a few times, you know, last year, first year of celebration, uh, got to dance on stage with the time. So he knew probably that I'm not, you know, I wouldn't be nervous. I, I do my thing, you know what I'm saying? So he sent one of his boys over to get me because I was in the back jamming with y'all. And really, we were jamming all through the whole show. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, um, so got up, got up on stage, got backstage, saw Wally, saw Kanisa, <laughs> my girl, our girl Kanisa, who's who's doing the uh, Muse to the Pharaoh yes. uh, okay. podcast. Mm -hmm. You know, in conjunction with Michael Dean's uh, podcast, and she does a great job. Um, anyway. So we backstage, man, and it's like we're kind of in awe. And I know she was she was nervous, you know what I'm saying? Cause she was just she just wanted to dance, you know. But um, they were just telling us to do our thing. So we went up there, man, and we, you know, we we locked it in. Shelby J was, you know, Shelby J was trying to, you know, she was, you know, Kanisha was on Team Shelby, and I was on Team Kip, you know. And I had to go at my girl, you know, because Kip was saying, like, we got to win, man. You can't let me down. So, you know, I had to do my thing, man. It was, you know, it really wasn't no mystery, man. It's like kind of like the Warriors and the Cavs. I mean, you know who's going to win, bro. You know what I'm saying? Oh. You know who's going to win. I mean, my nickname is L. Boogie. You understand what I'm saying? Because I get down like that. You know what I'm saying? So, but to my surprise, though, because Kanisa is not, you know, she's, She's reserved, you know what I'm saying? She's not as outgoing and flamboyant as I am. You understand what I'm saying? But she did her thing. I was proud of her. Because she, hey, she shook her tail feather. She did her thing. Right. Mm -hmm. But we, uh, but after the, uh, the, the dance off or whatever, we both got these beautiful shirts, as you can see. It says Fon Soldier on it. And on the back, on the back it says, uh, Real Music by Real Musicians. So this shirt is always a uh, hold a special place in my funky heart. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, no doubt. And every time I look at it, I'm gonna think off and I'm gonna think about Kanisa because we're forever connected, <laughs> forever connected. You know. All right. So you know, little chocolate drop did her thing. You understand what I'm saying? She was rep. She represented though. So <laughs> I was, I was, I was privileged to be on stage with the one and only Kanisa along with. The funk soldiers, you know what I'm saying? So, yes, sir. Shout out to the funk soldiers, and uh, hopefully, whatever uh, uh, incarnation or reincarnation of the band that they can get together to do something live, I would suggest if they come to your town, you better go. That's all I'm saying. Okay. I mean, yeah. you know, yes, so, sir. Yes, they were dope. You know, but that was definitely one of the highlights for for the. For the uh, after that, I was on cloud 25. You couldn't tell me nothing. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was, I was definitely in my zone after that, bro. I was ready for, I was ready for the night. I was ready for, I was ready for, uh, for, um, for, for the the love to the nines show. Oh yeah. And uh, that was uh, my man Tommy Barbarella and Michael B and mm. Sonny T. Mm. Now, you forgetting my man, the lead singer's name, man. Uh, yeah, I, I can't remember uh, the name. Things with Mambo Combo, but uh, he's he's off the chain. Uh, the whole that whole event was cold, but really, is live a night as we had the Funk Brothers. You understand? P. Ross and Mike. CMS, cause we went to the Love to the Nines event, <laughs> but our girl, good luck, Chum, Laura had the night of all nights that yep. I'm still kind of jealous about. But anyway, <laughs> we gonna let Laura take it on from here, cause it was her night. Yeah. Yes, so, it was. Laura. Yes, it was. <laughs> Michael, move out the camera. Michael, move out the camera. Scoot over. Before we get, to, before, we get to, before we talk about First Avenue, you go ahead and tell us what, what happened to you. Um, 
So, um, the night before, I had tickets to Love to the Nines. Like, I was supposed to go, and I got a text message from a friend who had some inside info that Sheila E. might be doing a show in town. Um, mm. told, me, told me to stay tuned to Ticketmaster, so I'm like, okay. And then he kept updating me, like, throughout, like, the early morning, and sure enough, like, she announced that she was doing a show at the Varsity, which that venue was really, really cool. Um, kind of like a Bogart-type setting, but better. Um, and so I decided <laughs> that I was going to ditch everybody else and go to this show, because I'm like, I have to go. Like, I just, ha mm -hmm. I just have to go. <laughs> so... Mm -hmm. I sold my ticket to Angel. Thank goodness she needed one. Otherwise, I would have been out Shout like forty dollars. <laughs> um, Shout out to Angel Chestnut for being part of the underground for one night. Yeah. <laughs> um. So I don't know. Like I, I had my Sheila poster that I bought off of Joe Orozco. Um that needed to be signed. Like, I was hoping that I could get it signed while I was there because it's such a rare poster, and I love it. It's, like, my favorite thing ever. So I had the poster in the back of our SUV, and, like, I dropped you guys off, and I went to the venue by myself, didn't have anybody to go with me, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> didn't know anybody that was going. <laughs> um, and I'm like, well, we'll see how this turns out. So I got there early. And managed to find a parking spot literally right next to the venue on the street. Got in line, got in, was in the front row, met some amazing girls, Jamie and Kim, um, made friends with them, and you know, we're just standing there. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we were just standing there talking, you know, waiting for Sheila to go on. And if you guys know Sheila and you've seen her live, you know she's always late. Always. She's never on time, so we're like, we're going to be here for a while. <laughs> so we're, like, chilling, and all of a sudden, you know, we turn around, and, oh, hey, Sheila's in the crowd. And there was only, like, I'd say in the building, there were less than 100 people. And they had, like, an upper level that people could sit, you know, there were, like, chairs up there. So a lot of people went upstairs. But there were, like, maybe 40, 50 of us on the floor, and she's just walking through saying hi to everybody, taking pictures. Um, that's when I got my picture with her. Um, and then, you know, she goes backstage. Then she comes out and does the show, and it was just super intimate because it wasn't sold out. There wasn't a whole lot of people. You know, she was bringing people up on stage to sing with her. Um, Paul Peterson was there and played a little bit with her. Um, and then, like, she didn't have her full band. Um she had her background singers that are always with her. Um, I think Rebecca Jade and um, Lynn Mabry, who I love. Like my favorite. Um, and so I think she had, like, one of her crew guys, like, play the keyboard or something. I don't know. It was some guy I've never seen before. But she had Michael with her playing guitar, of course. Um but it was just super intimate. She told so many great stories, which I posted those on the underground, you know, if you want to go back and, and watch all those videos. Um, but I had my poster in the car, and, like, after the show was over, I go to the door, and I talk to the security guard. I said, listen, I have this super rare poster. Sheila knows that it's in town. She knows that it's here. Um, and I'm like, can I go out and get it so I can try to get it signed? And he's like, normally I wouldn't let anybody do this, but I'll let you do it. He's like, go get it really quick and come back. So I literally run outside, run around the block, get in the truck. I'm running up the street with this big, giant frame poster <laughs> looking crazy. Like, people were staring at me like I was nuts. Um, but then, you know, he let me back in the venue, and one of the other security guards went and – said, you know, I'll go try to talk to her and see if she'll come out and sign it. Um, and then Joe Orozco shows up, <laughs> and he's like, did you get it? Did you get it? I'm like, no, I have it. Like, it's here. I don't know if she knows that it's here. They said they were going to tell her and bring her out so she could sign it. So we're kind of just standing there. And so we decide to go back to the stage to see if anybody came out. 
and her manager comes walking out. So we stop him and just say, hey, can, you know, is she going to come back out? And he's like, yeah, I'll bring her right through here and she'll stop and sign your poster. And that's what happened. Mm. So she signed it for me. Yeah. But Laura, you you missing you missing a point though. <laughs> what? When we got the celebration tickets mm -hmm. back last year. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. <laughs> one, of your, one of your main points of going was mm -hmm. to see Sheila E. Yep. And you told us that damn it, you are going to meet Sheila E. I said that's, that's my number one goal. goal. That's the only that's goal I have. I posted goal. on the underground about it. Yeah. Because that's my only goal is to get to meet her down in Louisville when we went down to Louisville to see her. Mm -hmm. Even though we were close enough and she kind of acknowledged us and all that, we really didn't meet her. Yeah. So for you to have that type of this, like, I don't give a damn what's happening. Because really, to, 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 to tell the people the, the truth, when you said you were going to see Sheila, we was kind of pissed at you, cause you were like, you were like, we were like, we're all for one, one for all. We all bought these tickets to see Love to the Nines. We just saw Sheila and Paisley. <laughs> Damn it! You supposed to be rolling with us? It's the underground. Nobody's supposed to break off from the crew. And you was like, "Damn it! I'm <laughs> going to see Sheila." Okay, well nobody say. And you was like, "Hey." That you was on a mission, so mm -hmm. it was like you spoke it. Hey, the law of attraction, <laughs> baby. You spoke it into existence. It happened, and we're so proud of you now. Yes, <laughs> man. Come back with that damn sign poster, girl. We was gonna dock you. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. You was getting docked. I know. But uh, hey. Amazing. That that that's, that's I just like hey. I had to do, and it was we, just we couldn't believe it. It was like, you know, for me to, I was kind of scared to be honest because I'm like I'm in this city, you know, that I don't live in, that I'm kind of familiar with, and I'm by myself, <laughs> just driving around. I'm going somewhere that I've never been in Minneapolis, but I was just like. I gotta go. Like this is my only chance. This is my only chance because I couldn't take the poster into Paisley. So right. it was just, you know, either I ditch the group and do this, or I go with the group and end up regretting it. So I know you weren't mad, but I know you were kind of like, I don't want you going by yourself. I'm like, well, I got to. But I made I made friends. Yeah, we we awesome. was worried about you. We was worried about. Yeah. But we was I worried about you. And, but when we got to First Avenue, I oh, forgot oh, what oh, Michael wait, was wait. saying. Hold on for a second, El Boogie. Before before you did, yeah. we didn't get a chance to meet Sheila, but we did. Me, El Boogie, and P. Ross, we did get a chance to meet Sonny Thompson. Yeah, yeah. Sonny, Sonny T. T. Yeah. Yeah. That was hot. And, I, I just, and you all got to that now. Avenue and go to the whole dance party thing, which I missed the entire dance party because Sheila was running so late, which I knew that was going to happen. Like, I didn't get out of there until, like, 1.30, and by that time, by the time I got to First Avenue, it was over. You, you, so, no, you, you can't win. Right. You know. Yeah. First Avenue was off the chat because we got to... I know it was. We, we got to... Uh, we got to, uh, what was it? Um, Dance with Ingrid. I forgot. I forgot. Well, when we walked in, it was so crowded. Cause see, we rolled. We rolled over there with, uh, with Eric and Amber, Paley Five and Dime. Five and Dime. You know. So we rolled with Eric and Amber down there, Miss Lulu, and um, we walk into the club. We go our first app. Matter of fact, I mean, we just packed. We just super packed. All every day, almost every event we went to, we run in it. We run into Ingrid Chavez. Yeah. <laughs> upstairs. And Ingrid again is so sweet and uh, approachable. And uh, so she's upstairs, and we, you know, we kick it into whatever, uh, and we take pictures with her. Um, 
and, and she's, you know, posing, we voguing, we doing all kind of stuff, you know what I'm saying? So we were just having a ball, man, and and, 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 and we ended up taking a picture with a girl, a girl, uh, Summer. Uh, I think she's, I, I think Angel, Angel, I think Angel Chestnut knows her. Cause she was the same girl at the, um, at the uh, Jelly Bean Johnson experience, you know. At the, the girl that was just up, she just was dancing by herself the whole night, grooving to the to, to the music. And I was like, damn, who was that? Cause she remind, she's like a female me. She never stops moving. She's just dancing, you know, grooving. So took a picture with her, and Angel took some pictures. And then we go downstairs, and Linka, Par Linka is, she's a hell of a DJ, you know. Uh, uh, much respect to her. Um, that's the second time I've been in her presence with her rocking the crowd and she never disappoints and she had us out there dancing and sweating this 700,000 people down there it's 89 degrees in there and um, of course I found my way to, to my my purple phone San Francisco peeps GG and Ty and, and, and Sanji and Tamir and all of them they were they were they had a part of the first half on lockdown on the dance floor. Oh yeah. <laughs> and everybody was just having a funky, sweaty good time. Yes, yes. Even Steve and, Park was on the dance floor. <laughs> yeah, Steve <laughs> Park was on the dance floor. You know, everybody was there. I I I, I do think uh was uh Mr. Christopher there for Funkatopia? I believe so. Because it was so crowded, if you you would see somebody, and after you get to the, into the crowd and start dancing, it turn it's like they were gone, like cause, yeah. <laughs> you know, people mm -hmm. were just in and out, in and out, you know. Mm -hmm. And so we're we're down there dancing to um, what song was that? Days uh, of Wild. Micah. Days, Days of Wild. Wild. Days of Wild. Yeah, and it was, and right. Yeah, we had. Me, me and L Boogie start throwing up the wild sign, and then once the first came back around, everybody was just waving from side to side. And even uh, yeah. uh, the DJ, she was the doing. DJ. It. Then after that, she get she. I forgot what else she played after that. But Angry Chavez came uh, came down with us. Slid right in. Party with us. I mean, I mean, it was like I said, we had a just a ball. Man. Yeah. And uh. After after first half, I was tired. <laughs> I was, I mean, I was tired. Like it felt like I lost about ten mm -hmm. pounds, but it was worth it. But uh, then after first half, P. Ross, you know, we had to go. I had to give me some some cops, you know, some that's some, a, some heat for that, 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 that's a different story. We got to do another <laughs> video for that shit. Yeah, we we do another for that. Hey, they go get. We we took up. We hey, we went to up. We went uptown, damn it, <laughs> and had an experience. Oh God. Yeah. That's a uh, different story. Yeah, we're, we're that's, never, yeah. never, never again. Yeah, yeah, that's a separate video right there. Yeah. Calhoun Square, and hey, we got to play Calhoun Square for that. Oh. Boy. Yeah. So, uh, but uh, overall, like I said, first half was off the chain. Oh. Uh, I felt a lot better when Micah told me he was like, uh, Laura met Sheila. <laughs> we was like, what? What? I knew it. He was like, I knew it. I knew it, damn it. Oh, <laughs> Man, look, I went right to my uh, Facebook. The first thing that pops up was her selfie with Sheila. I said, ain't that something? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wow. Hey, 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 Mike, I, like I said, Mike, I knew it. I, I, that, I knew that was going to happen. That was the clean version that you just said. Yeah, they yeah, what you that, was, that was the clean version. <laughs> what did you yeah. say? I'll tell you tell when me. we get off camera. Tell me right now. I'll tell tell you me in my ear. Camera. Tell me. I'll tell you when we get off camera. Be cool. <laughs> oh, but we were all happy for you, Lord. We were, we were, we were like, I be damned. She did it. You know what I'm saying? It was like, <laughs> she said she I was. Don't shit. How. I don't know how. But see, now, see, look, now she needs to do the same thing. Oh my God. For Miss Jackson, for Janet. The you pressure. Know, you have to. You have to put that out there. In you, the, you, you, you know what, Micah? You need not pressure her because this is like a once in a lifetime thing, and you put that pressure on her, it's gonna mess up everything. Let her right. have, let her have her positive energy, and you get your own. 
You put okay. that out there. <laughs> We've been speaking it into existence. We'll see what yeah, happens. Man. No guarantees. Glad to get some candles up, you know, cut some pictures of her out, and you know, <laughs> hang uh, with my music and see, do a little. Is, like, I try not to. All this good luck stuff. Good I've luck never had. I tell you. I've never had all this good luck before. So and you know why? Well, why, I've Lord? Never, Lord, why you have all the good luck you didn't have, baby? I don't know. Because you ain't been around. Hell, book it, baby. No. <laughs> you what I tell you. What I tell you. Stick with me. I'll set you free. Come on, baby. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's so, right. I try not to, to, to put that out there or to think that way. Because it's like I don't want to put that kind of pressure on myself. But then you... You're always like, you gotta work that good luck. You gotta do this, and I'm like, I can't. Like, I'm, don't do that. I'm just, I'm just teasing. Just saying. I just feel like you got some, some tricks in your bag. We've so been very like, blessed. We have been very blessed. True that. Well, we've been very blessed and fortunate. Yeah. yeah. That's for sure. That's for sure. Yeah. You know. It's so, wild. You, Actually, the things that have happened just over the last like. Two years, mm -hmm. unreal. Yeah. I mean, never ever thought that in in my lifetime that I would get to see the revolution. Never yeah. that would ever happen. No. Um, and you met. I never, and met up. Met, met them. Who, who gets I never, to meet them? Like seriously? I never thought I was gonna meet Maite or. Right. I, I would have never guessed that. It's just crazy. I mean, it's just been you know. Three times. It's been a run of good purple love. It's just, and the it's same crazy. way y'all, like this, the same way y'all feeling, yeah. there's probably a hundred stories like that with other Prince fam mm -hmm. from back in the day because we hardcore. You know, everything that happened to me, whether it was, uh, you know, getting the, the Prince tickets for the Love Sexy show where me and my partner, uh, Kenny Walker, uh, God rest his soul, uh, we out there selling black album cassettes, get more money so we can buy more, so we can buy more tickets in the morning because we we spent the night outside under Riverfront Coliseum at the time to get mm -hmm. the tickets. So just meeting people, uh, you know. Not knowing where Prince gonna be, and somebody say, "Oh, he go after party at such and such." You know what I'm saying? And you, you go, and you see Prince, and you know it's like, "Wow!" You know, the whole xenophobic experience for me. It's just a lot of Prince fans have that same type of just. I dropped everything I was doing, didn't know how I was gonna do it, and I just went. Yeah. It's a positive <laughs> thing. So it's like, you know, you. Your mindset was, I'm gonna meet Sheila E. That's the first thing you said after we bought the celebration tickets. I'm going, and hey, it's cost a lot of money, damn it, Lenny. Uh, but I'm going to Sheila. I love me some Sheila. They were like $75, <laughs> wasn't they? The tickets were $75? 70, yeah. 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 So, worth it. Worth it. Yeah. You know, it was worth it. You know what I'm saying? It was worth it. So, yeah. So I'm just excited for the future, you know what I'm saying? See what right. see what happens next, you know? You know, and we heard about these concerts that they were doing at First Avenue, and I'm like, that would be so cool, like, mm -hmm. to go there and to see them. And I'm like, you know, I just decided, without even talking to him, <laughs> I'm like, let me get online and see if I can just get these tickets, right. just to see if I can. And somehow... I don't know. I don't know how. I got them, and I'm like, uh, yeah, we've only been talking for you know a few months, but hey, we're going on vacation in September. <laughs> I don't know how we're gonna get there. I don't know where we're gonna get the money, but we're going. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's a, that's a separate video too. Oh yeah. yeah. But but all you know, and then getting the meet and greet for the revolution. Didn't think that was gonna happen, and. 
Yeah. Yes. What else? That's the power of the mentality of a prince fam. Yeah. <laughs> Let's you know what I'm saying? So, so nobody can say you ain't, you're not hard, you, you're not a hardcore Prince fan, uh, Laura. No. You, know yeah. you, 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 you joined the club. Welcome to the club. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she and she's so cute. I'm wearing my Marco Hart shirt that right. I love. Yeah. I need to get some yeah. more of his He needs to make Sheila stuff. Me and him talked about this. Over Messenger, I'm gonna have to message him again and be like, "So, what have you done? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we need some Sheila shirts." Oh yeah. So, uh, so P. Ross, man, you over there laying in the cut, you know, kind of quiet, man. So, so what was your right? Like, your no, no, I, I know. I wanted Laura to get all her stuff out. I didn't talked enough on these videos. I'm good. Uh, okay. I'm good. Okay. You know what okay. I'm saying? Right. It was definitely Laura's night. Yeah. <laughs> It yeah, was. Yes. It was. It definitely was. Yeah. Man. You know, so super easy. Other than I that, to get that know. home, it's not home yet. It's still down in um, Winchester with Eric and Amber. What? With my other posters. What? Oh, you all didn't know I got four posters? Five no, posters. The, the Sheila poster still in Winchester? Well, yeah, because. Yeah. Yeah, we go get it. We'll go girl, get it. Girl. We were supposed to go get it. We pay me, we pay me five and that Midwest girl. Girl. You better go get, we'll, we'll go hey, and get it. You better go get it before it end up on a five mm -hmm. and down for sale, girl. Oh, he knows I'll, I'll blow that. So I'll blow the five and dive up. <laughs> no, they're taking very good care of her. Uh, we, I've checked in. You know, Amber has let me know that she's doing well. And, you know, Eric has my other signed posters that I won in an auction. Um, I got a set of three um, Celebration 2017 autographed posters. I have one from the Revolution, one from the Time, and one from the NPG. So, all of those are down there. They're coming home. Yeah, they'll be coming home in July. So. Why? Which, uh, I don't know if I can go to the Midwest party because of my no. work schedule. We'll see. But we'll you see. You know, oh, but the underground will be there, though. Hmm? <laughs> oh, the yeah. Underground will be there. So, you guys have to go to I my mean, uh, Yeah, but shout out to, shout out to uh, Eric and them. Pay oh, me yeah, five no doubt, dollars. no doubt, no doubt. You know, yeah. so... So that was the night, man. That was that was uh, that was pretty much it, man. So we gonna, you know, we gonna wrap this up. You know, what I mean, you got something else to say, Laura? No, I'm good. I told good? my stories. Okay. All right. Does Mike have anything to say? Shout um, out to the. Uh, go ahead, go ahead, Lenny. <laughs> I want to shout out to the Funk Soldiers again. Love my love the shirt, man. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to my girl Kanisa doing her thing. We are forever linked, Chocolate Drop. So, other than that, man, uh, like I said, keep Funk alive, baby. Keep Funk alive. Peace. Mm -hmm. And we out.